Welcome to the Web EV Talk Series, everyone. It's an EV talk series for EV enthusiasts around the globe. So we are now on the 27th July 2021, and we have uh, Gang Long from uh, Unit of Virus Assembly and Host Institute Pasteur of Shanghai, Chinese Academy of Sciences, Shanghai, China. So Dr. Gang Long original interest focused on the molecular biology of hepatitis C virus, lipoviral particle assembly. In the last few years, his team developed strategies to purify EVs from hepatitis virus preparations and identified roles of these EVs in virus infection. So very recently, his team expanded to the scope to insect-borne flaviviruses and other medical viruses such as Zika virus, dengue virus, influenza, and SARS-CoV-2. So today, it's my pleasure to welcome Gang Long, and he's going to present his lecture on small extracellular vesicles and hepatitis virus assembly. And uh, before we start, I'd like to thank Horiba Scientific for supporting this session. Okay, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Carolina and also thank Xiaomei for uh, introducing me to this platform and give me the opportunity to introduce um, uh, my research and my team's work. Um, as you already mentioned, uh, my uh, team uh, established uh, based on hepatitis C virus. And uh, uh, before um, uh, I go into all the details of, of the research, I want to give a short uh, introduction on hepatitis C. Uh, hepatitis C is um, a globe uh, infectious uh, uh, disease. And uh, this is caused by a hepatitis C virus uh, infection to uh, to the to the liver, and it can be uh, divided into six to seven major genotypes uh, due to its um, uh, very high uh, heterogeneity uh, of genome. And these genotypes can also be subdivided into subgroups. So uh, the virus is very uh, uh, it's very special and. Um, um, so uh, before I go to the before I go to the uh, extracellular vesicle uh, part, uh, there is another um, uh, um, um, name called quasi species. Uh, I have to introduce uh, that's because uh, uh, HCV one one stage CV infect one individual uh, because of the variation of the genome uh, and uh, uh, the error introduced by uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Uh, mediated replication, the genome can be uh, uh, different from the parent genome and uh, uh, create um, a very high heterogeneous uh, uh, genome uh, pool of the same virus. Uh, hepatitis C virus used to be a very big clinical problem because the, um, most of the infection could lead to up to 85% of the uh, infected in individuals. Uh, can develop into a chronic uh, hepatitis C uh, hepatitis uh, uh, symptom, and um, uh, a, a portion of these patients will uh, develop into um, um, uh, HCC uh, carcinoma, and they will need uh, uh, um, liver transplantation. Uh, but uh, in the recent years, uh, the antiviral research uh, in hepatitis field. Uh, hepatitis C field especially is very successful. Uh, and, and nowadays, uh, hepatitis C treatment is, uh, um, is, is basically no longer uh, an, a medical um, problem anymore. Uh, direct antiviral agents combination, DAA compounds can uh, clear uh, most of the uh, HCV uh, infection, uh, no matter what type of uh, uh, genotype uh, the individuals uh, got contact. Uh, can you hear and see the slides, Carolina? Yeah, all good. Go ahead. Okay. And uh, HCV virus particle is very special. It's unlike uh, the other uh, virus particle, which you can uh, easily determine and uh, distinguish uh, under electron microscope, like HIV, influenza, paramyxovirus, and coronavirus, and uh, insect bone flavivirus. Uh, all these type of viruses, you can easily see them. Uh, but for H hepatitis C virus, it's very difficult. Uh, that's because the biochemical um, and uh, biophysical property of this type of virus particle is very complex. Um, 
So uh, biochemically, these uh, viruses are composed of, uh, from a uh, composed of uh, components uh, encoded by virus. So the virus structure protein, envelope protein, capsid protein, and virus genome, and also host components, neutral lipids, and also apolipoproteins. So this uh, a combination of components give rise to a, a, a hybrid a virus particle named lipovirus particle. And this lipovirus particle is the infectious, uh, the infectivity carrier. But there are also some hypotheses saying uh, uh, EV carry uh, viral RNA can also transduce uh, viral infect, uh, transmit uh, viral uh, inf infectivity. And um, uh, in our lab, uh, the early days of uh, my my team, uh, we devised um, um, uh, viral infection detection system. And in this system, uh, uh, HCV infection could uh, induce um, could induce a GFP or M cherry glowing inside of the nucleus. And uh, by using this um, uh, imaging system, we could clearly see if the virus assembly is not happening without capsid protein, envelope protein, or apolipoprotein E, which helps the virus assembly, uh, apolipoprotein. Um, um, absence could also uh, lead to the um, lead to um, uh, unsuccessful transmission of a viral genome. So that means uh, EV carry a viral genome, replicable viral genome, is not infectious, uh, at least for hepatitis C virus. And after we uh, um, knowing the uh, the EV carry our RNA is not uh, infectious and we try to answer uh, what uh, what is the uh, functional role of EV uh, during the virus infection what kind of modification HCV infection and did to uh, to EV uh, composition and to EV's function uh, so the uh, recent uh, uh, the recent years uh, so my lab um, um, uh, Find out uh, that's uh, find out actually uh, EV is also uh, a part of uh, a play a very important role in the HCV infection. Um, I will introduce uh, uh, in the in the following slides and uh, the lipoprotein and the lipoviral particle uh, interaction uh, is also uh, one of our interest uh, interest um, area. So uh, today I'm going to introduce these two parts um, of research. And uh, after, after that, I will also expand a little bit more to uh, the, the recent uh, experiments we have done and which is not published yet. So the first part uh, is uh, the neglected uh, but important role of apolipoprotein E exchange in HCV infection. Uh, in the beginning, I already introduced apolipoprotein E. It's a very, uh, it's a very uh, critical uh, host component for um, infectious lipoviral particle uh, assembly uh, and production. Uh, with a cell without apolipoprotein E, cannot produce um, uh, efficient uh, infectious uh, virus particle. But uh, uh, the first thing we uh, we uh, did uh, in uh, Institute of Pasteur of Shanghai is to try to uh, knock out apolipoprotein E from hepatoma cells. And uh, in this knockout background, we also uh, uh, reintroduce apolipoprotein E3 with a H attack in uh, as a rescue cell line. And then we uh, produced a virus from uh, ApoE knockout background and ApoE a rescue background. I use these two similar virus and then to infect cells with or without ApoE. And to our surprise, um, no matter the virus coming from a KO background or a rescue background, the infectivity, the virus infectivity uh, is always dependent on the expression of the target cells, uh, the ApoE expression of the target cells. So that tells us actually ApoE expression is not only important for the infectious virus particle assembly and release, and is also very important for virus to infect the new cells. And 
uh, uh, the expression, not only the APOE3, but also APOE2 and APOE4, a different ally of APOE. And uh, we see a very, sim a very similar phenotype. So that means APOE uh, allies expression in, um, uh, in target cells is important for the permissiveness of, uh, of the cell to HCV infection. So the next question we ask is, uh, uh, what is going on to these cells? Why the cells expressing APOE could make the cells more, uh, more permi uh, permissive to HCV infection? And uh, we use uh, two different target cells. So one cell uh, is the uh, SHNT cells expressing uh, constituted level of APOE and uh, another cell express no APOE. And uh, then we use a virus uh, coming from different background, but when we uh, knock, uh, inoculate the virus to uh, different cells, uh, we first uh, change the medium. And we used a different medium. We used a medium coming from normal background, APOE background, and also uh, rescued background. And what to our surprise again, uh, once we add medium before virus infection, if the medium has uh, APOE, it has APOE and the infection is always uh, more uh, efficient. So that tells us actually the APOE expression in the permissive cells, uh, it helps the virus infection is because in the, in the, in the, uh, in the target cell culture medium, the presence of uh, of some uh, of something in the medium, but in the medium it's 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 because in the medium uh, the APOE is playing an important role. And then we did another experiment. Experiment we use HA uh, gel to deplete APOE from medium, and then use this medium to do the uh, medium uh, dependent viral infection enhancement again. And what we see is. Once we remove the APOE from the APOE3 HA medium, the uh, viral infection uh, efficiency are decreased. So this tells us actually the viral infection uh, enhancement is because of the APOE present in the medium. Uh, we know APOE is um, is uh, is um, uh, apolipoprotein present not only on uh, uh, low density lipoprotein, but also high density uh, lipoprotein is because it's um, uh, exchangeable uh, capability. It can exchange between uh, VLDL and HDL um, populations. And then the next question we ask is um, uh, whether apolipoprotein E is mobile between uh, uh, lipoprotein particles and lipoviral particles. To answer this question, we first um, uh, used uh, uh, cells uh, to express, uh, use the hepatoma cells to express apolipoprotein E3 with the HA tag. And also uh, in another uh, uh, setup, we expressed apolipoprotein E3 with a flag tag. And uh, uh, from the panel A, we could see a successful establishment of this um, uh, cell line. And from the panel B, we could see apolipoprotein E are incorporated into uh, lipoproteins uh, uh, um, at a low density, uh, low density range and also high density range. Um, and the uh, addition of HA tag and flag tag do not change the property of apolipoprotein incorporation uh, capability to uh, lipoprotein particles. And then the next thing we did, next experiment we did is we mix uh, the medium coming from APOE3 HA uh, cells and also coming from APOE3 flag cells. And once we mix them together and we did, did a separate uh, immunoprecipitation with HA tag and with flag tag, we could uh, uh, successfully um, pull out uh, both apolipoprotein. This suggests the apolipoprotein E could exchange between lipoparticles, lipoprotein particles. And then the next thing is to, uh, to examine whether this exchange uh, equilibrium is also maintained between uh, lipoprotein and also uh, lipoviral 
particles, the HCV infectious virus particles. And what we did is um, uh, first we um, uh, add a tag uh, to apolipoprotein E and produce uh, uh, lipoprotein particles with uh, apoe HA tag. And uh, uh, we also produce a, a virus uh, particle and the virus particle um, coated with, uh, with E2, we put an N-terminal E2 uh, flag tag a modification on the virus particle. So by these two uh, modification, then we can uh, specifically pull out uh, either uh, viral pro uh, either uh, lipo uh, uh, lipoviral particle or apolipoprotein. And when we mix these two uh, population together, um, the HA uh, pull down could take uh, virus infectivity and virus genome out. And when we um, uh, use flag E2 uh, to pull down infectious virus particle, we could also uh, take out uh, APOE with uh, HA modification. So that tells us uh, APOE exchange is not just happening between lipoparticle, lipo lipoprotein particles, but it also happens uh, between uh, lipoprotein and lipoviral particle. And this exchange between the of APOE between viral particle and um, uh, lipoprotein particle, why this exchange is so important for uh, HCV infection, and uh, we find out um, actually with addition of APOE uh, present median, the virus attachment to uh, to uh, liver cell surface is more efficient. This makes the virus infection. Um, uh, uh, more productive, and uh, we used uh, not only uh, HCV uh, lab strains and also the um, uh, HCV specimen uh, coming from a clinical site with this uh, similar uh, result. So, so to summarize the first part, uh, apolipoprotein E is a mobile uh, component in the circulation system. It's important for uh, uh, not only for HCV infectious virus particle production. It's also very important for high cell um, permissiveness to HCV infection. Um, ex exogenous uh, APOE level uh, supported by uh, infection target cells are the key element to control the infection efficiency. And APOE exchange between HCV lipoviral particle and lipoproteins are present and it's very important to keep uh, APOE uh, level on lipoviral particle and to maintain an optimal uh, attachment efficiency to help the virus infection. Then uh, we know HCV is a very uh, complex uh, type of uh, uh, virus and the virus particle is composed of two uh, sides of um, uh, materials, apolipoprotein and also structural uh, protein of the virus. And then the next day is uh, we want to, uh, still we don't know how the virus looks like. We know APOE is a part of the infectious virus particle, but um, is that a possible, some other, uh, vir some other host of protein also present in uh, the infectious virus particle? Then the next thing we, uh, we did is um, uh, we use uh, uh, the lipoviral particle model and um, uh, mo uh, modify the E2 protein, the HCV E2 protein with N-terminal tag again. And by using uh, the flag tag, we could um, directly, theoretically, we could directly pull out uh, the infectious virus particle. And by doing omics study, and we can, uh, uh, we have, we we would have opportunity to uh, to um, to study the uh, biochemical component and also the uh, genomic uh, component of uh, of infectious virus particle. Uh, that's our hypothesis. So what we did is to use flag to do affinity purification of the infectious virus particle. And what we see is, of course, we could see a, a lot uh, um, high level of apolipoprotein B and apolipoprotein E. And this, this word are the, uh, are the information we already know. But apart from that, we see uh, a lot of um, um, EV markers and uh, one of them, and is repeatedly um, reported in two uh, papers. One paper 
is from uh, uh, my uh, my own study and another one uh, coming from um, uh, Rockefeller University uh, uh, from uh, Charles Rice group. Um, we all find uh, the protein synthening is present in these um, uh, affinity purified HCV uh, preparations. Then uh, the question is, um, is this uh, contaminants or uh, EV or exosoma uh, biogenesis pathways involved in uh, HCV infectious virus particle production? So to answer this question, the first thing we did is to knock out, uh, like um, the, the previous type, uh, we knock out the syntonine and uh, to see if uh, uh, syntonine could, um, um, uh, uh, to whether syntonine has some impact to HCV uh, replication and also infectious virus production. And the panel A shows uh, we used different uh, guide RNA and um, in, we succeed to generate uh, a syntony knockout <clears throat> hematoma cell line. And in this uh, uh, knockout cell line, uh, we, uh, we did a virus uh, HCV infection and uh, following the infection time course, uh, we examined uh, uh, the HCV infectivity production in the panel C, and also we uh, monitored the protein expression, viral protein expression kinetics, and we checked uh, uh, protein E, uh, E2 with a flag tag, and uh, we checked the non-structured protein NS5A, which is very important for HCV replication, and also the core protein, the, the, the capsid protein. And what we see is a um, uh, knockout of this syntony uh, protein, which is very important for, uh, for um, uh, EV biogenesis, uh, has no impact to uh, HCV uh, replication, uh, protein accumulation inside of the cell, and also the infectious virus particle production and secretion. It's very uh, disappointed, but um, uh, that's uh, what we got uh, repeatedly. And then we turn it around. We try to uh, uh, examine uh, the, uh, the syntony expression level in primary human hepatocytes, this PHH in panel B. And we find out actually uh, in PHH in the liver, the uh, syntony level is relatively high. Therefore, we overexpress the syntony um, uh, in uh, HUH 7.5.1 cells. And then in this syntony overexpression and the GFP expression or Y type uh, cell, we did infection again and we tried, uh, we monitored the uh, uh, virus infectivity production and uh, protein accumulation uh, one more time. And uh, uh, very similar to the, the previous setup, we didn't find uh, any difference uh, between the virus uh, infectivity production and. Um, uh, the protein accumulation is very much similar, but uh, uh, one thing uh, draw our uh, um, attention is the uh, E2 uh, protein, E2 flag protein, um, intracellular level is significantly lower than the, uh, the E2 level in the uh, normal HH 7.5 cells and also uh, in the, uh, in the uh, GFP overexpressing cell. So uh, then the next thing is uh, we ask um, what is going on in this um, uh, syntony overexpressing uh, cell line? And we know syntony uh, from uh, other, uh, other researchers study syntony overexpression is, uh, 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 is important for EV production. Uh, overexpression could uh, high up the EV uh, biogenesis and secretion. And so in the panel A, we uh, tried to, uh, we tried to, uh, um, to confirm that. And indeed, uh, in the syntony knockout cell, the EV uh, marker secretion uh, in the supernatant, uh, the CD63 and the syntony analytics is very low. And in the syntony overexpression set, uh, setup, uh, the Alex syntony CD6 B3 secretion is much higher. And by using NTA uh, analysis, uh, we could also see the particle number produ produced from the syntony overexpressing cell is much higher. And th um, then uh, we, then the next question we ask is uh, whether this E2, uh, E2 protein is interacting inside of the cell with uh, syntony and we performed the IP analysis. 
and we find out actually the uh, E2 and syntony is, um, we didn't uh, find uh, uh, interaction between these two proteins. Instead, E2, uh, no interacting with, uh, uh, E2 was known to interact with the core protein for assembly. But um, uh, although the, the, the interaction between E2 and syntony, we didn't find, but uh, over expression of syntony, uh, indeed, uh, we could see again uh, the intracellular E2 level is much lower, and that the extracellular um, E2 level uh, pick up by uh, flag bees is much higher, uh, and also the uh, uh, EV markers are much higher in the in the supernatant. Um, we further in the panel E we further um, uh, deleted uh, some proteins which is important some proteins important for HCV assembly uh, for instance uh, the P7 protein the ion channel protein important for for envelopment of uh, infectious virus particle and capsid protein important for the uh, for the uh, nuclear capsid assembly uh, without these two protein E2 protein can still secrete uh, to uh, the actual cellular space. So this give, gives us a hypothesis that an, um, uh, syntony uh, expression does not change HCVCC property, but it enhances uh, E2 secretion uh, independent from uh, HCV lipoviral particle assembly pathway. And by using, uh, by using the uh, biochemical analysis, uh, IP analysis, we got, we got this um, uh, conclusion. Uh, we further confirmed that by using uh, uh, a drug treatment. And when we use uh, this um, uh, GW4869 uh, uh, chemical, uh, uh, this compound, and we could, uh, uh, we could see uh, um, the, um, the supernatant level of E2 uh, is decreased uh, in the presence of uh, EV, inhibit, EV uh, biogenesis compound. Um, and the next, uh, to, re to uh, further uh, confirm uh, the E2 secretion is independent from, uh, is independent from HCV infection, we compared uh, the, uh, the cells uh, infected by HCV, all the cells uh, just express uh, the core to uh, NS2 protein without, in this type of cells, uh, the, the, the cell only express a core to NS2 protein with a flag tag on the E2 uh, uh, N terminal site. And, but these two cells are, uh, are uh, without uh, uh, HCV replication, HCV genome replication. And only the HCV infected cells as a, as a, as a control and uh, HUH 7.5.1 as, uh, as an active control. So in these cell lysates, uh, HCV infected cells produce NS5 and E2 flag, um, and also core protein and E1 protein. Uh, these are the viral protein and also uh, the host protein we also examined. But in the cells uh, without HCV infection, without a genome replication, only with a, a core to NS2 expression, uh, syntony overexpression could uh, uh, also bring a, a reduction of the E2 accumulation uh, inside of the uh, inside of these cells. And E2 protein uh, is not uh, changed. E1 protein is also changed. Uh, suggest E1 and E2 together are um, form a complex and may uh, use the exosomal pathway uh, to secrete to, um, to actual cellular space. And when we use some um, um, uh, flag E2 affinity purification, and we could uh, isolate either, uh, uh, we could isolate either uh, EV and HCV combination in the HCV uh, infected setup, uh, and also uh, just the EV. Um, uh, preparations. And in this case, we could see overexpression of syntony could bring uh, a very high level of E2 secretion uh, together with um, uh, exosome preparations. And by using uh, uh, immuno-EM, we could see um, uh, um, 
flag tag uh, immediate immunocapture uh, obtained uh, vesicles uh, got E2 on the surface and also got CD63 on the surface. Uh, suggest uh, uh, E2 protein is present on the on the uh, EV uh, on the EV uh, surf surface membrane, and we also uh, performed uh, uh, we also performed uh, uh, EV uh, 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 performed EV uh, recovery by using sequential centrifugation uh, instead of uh, a flag affinity purification. Uh, we could also see a similar uh, result. Synteny overexpression could bring a much higher E2 and E1 uh, secretion together with EV, um, EV pellets. And next, uh, uh, knowing uh, E2 is secreted uh, in two different ways. Uh, one way is um, a virus uh, particle on top of a lipovirus particle. And another way is on the uh, extracellular, small extracellular vesicle. The next question we ask is, uh, what's the function of this um, uh, uh, envelope protein coated EVs? And we uh, uh, tested uh, the virus uh, susceptibility to, um, uh, to, um, um, to um, HCV E2 specific antibody this AR3A neutralizing antibody. And what we could see is when, uh, when the, uh, the virus is produced from a normal background, uh, the virus is very uh, sensitive to uh, antibody treatment. But um, uh, uh, when the virus coming out from a synteny high uh, background, uh, the virus become uh, more uh, resistant to uh, neutralizing, uh, neutralizing antibody. And um, uh, we also uh, produce the virus uh, from the same background, but um, uh, with addition of a medium coming from core to NS2 expressing uh, background and all directly from uh, E2 expressing background. Addition of this medium uh, will also bring the virus more resistant to, um, uh, to uh, neutralizing antibody um, uh, treatment. Uh, last, uh, we examined uh, more than uh, 70, uh, 70 uh, uh, samples of, uh, of HCV uh, uh, of HCV infected patient derived serum. And we examined the E2 level, synteny level, and also the neutralizing capability. And what we see is uh, uh, the more E2 uh, or the more synteny level, uh, the less competent uh, is the serum. Uh, against a uh, virus, against a virus infection. And we also performed this, uh, uh, we select uh, uh, six, uh, um, six uh, serum samples and performed uh, this neutralizing uh, assay uh, using different uh, uh, HCV genotypes and we see similar, uh, similar um, uh, result. Uh, so that means very high uh, E2 uh, level uh, and synteny level in serum correlates with uh, reduced uh, neutralizing, acti neutralizing activity of the serum against a different type of um, uh, HCV, genotype of uh, HCV uh, infectivity. Uh, at last, uh, this in vitro uh, experiment, uh, we, uh, we all did using uh, hepatoma cells and then we performed, at last we performed uh, uh, experiments in uh, primary human hepatocytes and we tried to uh, knock uh, down synteny level from human um, um, primary human hepatocytes and then generate virus from uh, this um, uh, uh, modified uh, cell. And the cells without, uh, with low level of synteny uh, becomes more uh, sensitive uh, to uh, antibody neutralization. So at last I want to uh, um, to uh, uh, summarize uh, the, the, the second part. So HCV infection is, um, um, is, is, is a complicated uh, story, especially the infectious virus particle is composed, with, uh, composed of um, uh, viral components and also apolipoprotein components from the host site. And E2 are on the surface of uh, uh, lipovirus particle. Um, from this study, we also see uh, E2 is present in the EV 
uh, in the in the on the uh, surface of extracellular uh, vesicles or the small extracellular vesicle or exosomes, and this um, uh, EV. Uh, this EV in the uh, in the presence of high level of a uh, synteny expression or in in the PHH uh, uh, cell background, uh, the productivity of uh, uh, virus are very much similar, but uh, the uh, the production efficiency of uh, EVs carry E protein uh, become much more efficient. So that tells us actually in in vivo setup. Uh, uh, most of the E2 protein is secreted with secreted uh, in the presence uh, in the form of EV, and this EV could uh, help the virus to uh, escape from um, uh, antibody neutralization. Could also help the um, uh, the virus. This could also help the virus to establish uh, a chronic uh, chronic infection. Uh, the previous study, when we use um, HCV as a model virus to uh, to uh, to study the EV uh, EV carried E and also the uh, virus carried E, the relationship between these two populations, uh, we could not uh, direct uh, directly isolate um, uh, isolate the, the isolate the EV. What we can, uh, what we did is uh, we uh, used genetic modification. Uh, we uh, knocked down. Uh, the EV production by uh, knockout synteny level, um, uh, synteny expression, and uh, then uh, then uh, we could uh, produce uh, the virus uh, um, in the presence of low level of EVs, but we could not directly iso isolate this EV um, by uh, uh, by uh, uh, accessible uh, method. So the next thing we uh, we we uh, my lab um, uh, uh, one uh, sorry one uh, uh, one early experiment of my lab uh, did is um, uh, we um, we generated uh, antibodies against uh, tetraspanins, um, but unsuccessful. Uh, but unfortunately, we could not uh, generate uh, antibody against um, uh, CD sixty three. Um, and uh, CD81, which are present, are the tetraspanin highly expressed in liver cells, uh, uh, hepatocytes. Um, we could only generate uh, uh, a very uh, efficient antibody against the CD9. But unfortunately, CD9 is not present in the liver, so we uh, changed to another virus, uh, the Zika virus. And when we use a Zika virus uh, infection uh, to um, uh, the um, to HUVAC uh, cell culture, uh, which is highly abundant in H uh, CD9 uh, expression. So in this type of um, uh, uh, viral infection setup, we could um, uh, 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 we could directly uh, isolate uh, CD9 uh, positive uh, EVs and could uh, separate this EV uh, from uh, uh, infectious virus particle. And what we found uh, in the case of uh, uh, Zika uh, virus uh, experiment is uh, what we see is uh, uh, by using uh, CD9 uh, pure, uh, immune capture, we could uh, carry, we could uh, isolate uh, most of the uh, EVs from uh, uh, ultracentrifugation re uh, recovered EV pellets. And uh, these EVs uh, show very distinct, distinct morphology uh, from the uh, from the virus from the virus particle. And this EV, of course, um, they also carry um, uh, Zika uh, gen genomic RNA, but they are not infectious at all. And by using uh, 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 antibody dependent enhancement uh, uh, experiment setup, we see a similar uh, result. And that means um, uh, the E protein can also secrete together with um, uh, se secrete together with a small extracellular vesicle, and can also attract an, um, 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 antibodies. And uh, this uh, sub optimal sub uh, sub optimal uh, concentration of a neutralizing antibody in uh, in flavivirus infection. Uh, is not able to neutralize uh, HCV, uh, neutralize Zika or dengue 
uh, infection, but they can enhance uh, uh, virus infection. But in the presence of high level of EVs carry the carry the E protein, uh, these EVs could attenuate the ADE uh, not only in vitro setup but also in vivo setup. Um, at last, I will also uh, I would also like to uh, introduce um, a little bit about um, um, uh, a, a research we published uh, last year. Um, that's a, a story about hepatitis A virus. And this virus um, uh, infects uh, uh, through uh, uh, oral fecal um, um, spreading uh, route. And this virus uh, uh, present in the in individual in two different forms. And one is enveloped form and one is a, a naked form. But uh, biochemically, these two type of uh, uh, virus particle, the naked HAV particle and the enveloped viral particle, they are different uh, in uh, they are different uh, on the uh, they are different in the uh, uh, protein uh, composition. Uh, the PX protein uh, is only present in the uh, enveloped uh, uh, virus particle. So uh, we sought to um, uh, to see um, um, what's the mechanism um, and uh, why this PX um, um, protein is so special uh, in the in in the uh, envelope, or just in the envelope to a virus particle, not in the naked virus particle. And by using uh, virology and uh, biochemical, virological and biochemical method, uh, we find out uh, the presence of PX, especially the C terminal part of the PX. Um, uh, it can uh, interact with the V domain of Alex and could introduce um, uh, the uh, assemble the virus particle or foreign protein into uh, um, into um, a multivesicular body and form a EV and to secrete to uh, extracellular space. So uh, HAV, uh, PX, this peptide, short peptide, could guide assembled uh, virus particle and also cargo protein to, into small EVs. So at last, I would like to thank uh, my uh, my uh, my mentor, uh, Ralph Badenschlager in Heidelberg. And also I want to thank uh, Charles Rice for providing uh, materials for the early studies of uh, HCV uh, research. And I would also like to uh, thank my collaborators in, uh, in China and also the grants. And thank you all of you for uh, your attention. Uh, thank you again. Um, right. stop Can I stop, stop sharing? Yes, please, yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, Xiaomei, uh, please go ahead. Thank you for Yeah, can you hear me? And I apologize that because for my internet problem, I wasn't able to give the uh, introduction at the beginning. So Dr. Long gave a very informative and uh, uh, wonderful presentation. Now it's uh, time for question. And uh, uh, Katya has a question. Would you like to speak, Katya? Or shall I read the question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, please, Katya, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello. Um, sorry. Hello. Uh, uh, hi. I'm, I'm going to have to leave soon because I have another meeting. So I'm, I'm just uh, like re saying the questions I wrote in the in the uh, chat, which is um, so my understanding about the syntenin part on uh, in inducing E2 secretion in exosomes. Uh, the reason you call these vesicles exosomes is the sensitivity to JW4869, right? I mean, that's what I understood, but uh, I was wondering whether you looked at the, the intracellular um, uh, position of E2 in the cells. Is it in MVBs or is it is it at uh, the cell surface? And, it's partly. And it's, I, I would it's not a... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, the the uh, the present the E2 protein is mainly uh, in. Uh, it's mainly. Uh, uh, inside of the cell, it's not uh, it's not on the surface. Um, and we did uh, um, IF analysis, and we could see the co-localization of E2 uh, E2 flag with uh, ER marker and also with uh, CD63 marker. So um, with ER? that's that's a, 
that's that's the reason why we think uh, these are a small uh, extracellular vesicle. It's not uh, uh, shedding directly from the uh, cell membrane. I, I mean, you mean exosome, small extracellular vesicles means all vesicles that are small, which can come either from uh, endosomes or the plasma membrane. Um, so small extracellular uh, vesicles could be either from the plasma membrane or exosomes. But what you are saying is that you think it's real exosomes from MVBs. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think um, uh, the study, when we uh, assembled the, uh, the manuscript and then sent, sent for publication, that was uh, two to three years ago. Thank you again for this great presentation. Lots of, of uh, novel, interesting data. And I'm sorry, but I have to leave now because I have another meeting. So bye all and thanks for the... the um, it does look like um, there is a potentially a mixture of vesicles uh, that you're looking at. Have you also looked into other regulator like uh, RAP27 or... Um, uh, the um, spangomalian or the lipids, uh, that sort of thing. There's a possibility. Uh, there's a, a mixture of that. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a it's a, it's a good suggestion. Um, uh, I I need to read more papers re regarding to uh, uh, regarding to the uh, extracellular vesicle population and subpopulation definition, and um, then uh, with uh, with this knowledge and with uh, more uh, more. Uh, ways to uh, to uh, monitor the cell to to modify the cell. We could answer uh, more uh, specifically what type of um, uh, EV, uh, what uh, subpopulation of EV is carrying uh, the envelope protein from uh, hepatitis C virus and also from Zika virus. Um, it, it requires uh, more more experiments. I think. Thank you for your suggestion. Yeah, certainly very complex. Um... Xiaomei? Uh, I have one question, yeah. Uh, since the E2 coated exosomes can sequester uh, neutralizing antibodies, in your presentation, it mentions uh, uh, that, um, so your results may have implications for the development of uh, hepatitis C vaccine. Can you uh, give more uh, uh, explanation about your source of how can the exosome help in the development of vaccine um uh, uh, thank you professor yan for your for your uh, question um uh, development of hcv vaccine is um uh, it, it seems a, a, a mission impossible um it's it's extremely it's extremely difficult uh, people try different ways uh, to express um, uh, proteins and use different argument but um, um Induction or production of neutralizing antibodies, it's not a problem, it's because uh, it's, it's, it's not a problem. The problem is HCV itself. So HCV goes in and it produces a lot of uh, decoys like EV carry the E protein. This type of thing can help the virus to escape from the, from the, uh, from the presence of a neutralizing antibody. I think that's, uh, that's one, uh, one trick uh, uh, HCV play during the infection in, uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, individual. And, uh, but um, uh, recently uh, my lab is also working on, uh, uh, on the E2 protein. And what we found is actually the E2 protein, a very small segment of the E2 protein, uh, or it's very important for the loading of this E2 on the exosome. So that means we could uh, generate a virus which could only produce the infectious virus particle but cannot produce EV with E2 on the top. So that tells maybe this type of virus is, can, can be easily cleaned in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, for instance, in animal or in, uh, in probably in the long term in the, in the individual. And this could bring not only neutralizing antibody and T cell response and memory and everything, but this type of virus itself can be easily cleaned. It's kind of attenuation of the of the virus. I hope uh, we have chance to uh, look into that in in that direction, but um, it really depends on uh, whether uh, we could get support uh, in the further support in HCV research probably it's not very easy in the future. Thank you.
Uh, what about the uh, mRNA vaccine uh, approach for the HCV, you know, the, the COVID-19? <laughs> uh, yeah, the mRNA. Uh, I, th I think yeah. mRNA vaccine is very, is a very straightforward uh, uh, approach uh, to, express, uh, to express protein. Um, but um, uh, in, the, in the field of HCV vaccine, um, induction of neutralizing antibody is not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, so if you change a way to uh, express the protein to induce neutralizing antibody, I, I don't think it will help a lot. That's okay. because the virus is so special. It, it doesn't care about the induction of neutralizing antibody. The, 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 the chronic infected patients has very high level of neutralizing antibody, no problem, but the viruses stay there um, for many years. So they don't care. Um, I, think, I, think, I think probably um, um, uh, the technical approach will not, uh, will not directly solve the problem of HCV vaccine. I think it's more on the biology of HCV virus assembly and virus particle. If we know exactly how the virus uh, is, is, is assembled and also the subviral particle like the EV carry the E protein and what type of population is that and what's the sto stoichiometry of this population versus the other population. If we know all of this, probably we could find a new way. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, I think that's the last question. Um, okay. So, you, yeah, uh, wait a second. Uh, I'd like to thank you, Gang Long, for uh, your wonderful presentations. And um, oh, thank you. yeah, thank you for uh, sharing that with us and learn so much about the virus. Um, uh, well, extracellular vesicles from virus perspective as well. I think that's very cool. And um, Xiaomei, thank you so much for leading the QA today. And uh, even though we have some technical difficulties, but you managed to join at the end. So yeah. that was wonderful. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for helping. Have a good first time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah.